and I wouldn't want that to happen to you and that's why I'm going to be taking you on these sounds so I want you to pay attention and then look at how you can practice with these sounds I will be putting you through now before I go on to these sounds remember the last sound the last topic we had was on syllables and then we said the syllable is the smallest part of a word and then can you remember words with one syllable what we call them they're called monosyllabic and words with two syllables are called disyllabic while words with three syllables are called trisyllabic as i said earlier we're going to be learning about the sounds p and the sound b these are the two confusing sounds i was talking about earlier the two sounds are the sound p and the sound b the sound p is a consonant sound can i hear you say p p p p great p is a voiceless consonant sound and if you want to pronounce this sound the two part of your lips the upper and the lower one comes in context for you to be able to pronounce the sound now the major spelling letter given the sound p is the letter p when you have a word like pen can you say that yes also when you have a word like people can you say that also when you say pap can you try that very good now i want you to pronounce these words you're going to be seeing on your screen the first we have there is mop can you say that one more time good can i hear you say i want to mop the floor okay now next one we have is paint can you try that and after that we have pray can you say that very good and the last one we have is poppy can you try that one more time very good now let us look at the sound b the sound b is given by the letter b remember we said the sound p is given by the letter p the sound b is given by the letter b now you know what's more they are actually confusing because the sound p and the sound b are actually pronounced the same way with the two part of the lips coming in contact the only difference is the pronunciation of the sound the sound p is different from the sound b okay now the letter giving us the sound b is letter b where you have words like ball can you say that also when you say biscuits can you try that also when you go balloon can you say that and when you have a word like rabbit can you try that very good and so on and so forth i taught you the last time how to give yourselves a speak right clap so give yourselves a speak right clap <laughs> speak right that is good now i would like you to know that the letter p and the letter b can actually be silent in words the letter p and the letter b can be silent in words now let's look at some words where the letter p is silent like when you have a word like psalm look at that word psalm where do you get to see that word in the bible isn't it so you don't pronounce the letter p in that word it should say psalm also the next one we have is psychology can you try that and the next we have is empty say empty okay and the last one we have is pneumonia one more time now the sound b can also be silent when you have m and b in the same syllable pay attention to this letter b is silent where you have letters M and B in the same syllable. 
Like when you have bomb, the first B there is pronounced, but the second one isn't. So you go bomb. Next one is doubts. Can you try that? Very good. And the last one we have there is comb. Can you say that? One more time. Very good. So I want you to make sure you practice with these two sounds. If you don't practice with them, it won't become a part of you. And you have the tendency to become a very good speaker if you can make use of these sounds all the time. Keep practicing and I hope to see you in the next lesson. Welcome back, my amazing learners. I am your teacher, God will by name. And it's always a glad thing to be in your presence whenever I get the chance to, because I'll never get tired of teaching you how to improve your speaking ability. Now, the last time we talked about syllables, we said syllable is the smallest unit in word in which a word is divided. Let me take it again. A syllable is the smallest unit in which a word is divided. We also said that for you to read fluently, you need to know how to break words into syllables. I hope you remember the lesson. Can you remember? Yes. Where we get to learn about the classification of words, words with one syllable, words with two syllables, and the likes. Can you remember now? I'm sure you can. Now, in this lesson, we're going to talk about disyllabic words. We're going to talk about disyllabic words. Now, when we say disyllabic words, we're going to be looking at how to identify them and also how to pronounce them. Now, disyllabics are words with two syllables. Okay, now we have lots of words with two syllables which we use while speaking with our family and friends. Okay, if you want to know if a word has two syllables, raise your thumb and count the number of times you say a word. And you will see that you're counting it exactly two times. Words with two syllables are easy to pronounce because the stress falls either on the first or the second syllable. Look at the example shown to you on the screen. The stress syllable is written with a capital O and the unstressed syllable is written with a small letter O. Now we decided to design it this way to help your pronunciation ability. Now let's start with words where the first syllable is being stressed in our disyllabics. So I'll pronounce the word and you repeat after me. The first is challenge. Can you say that? Okay, I want to believe you're saying that well. Next one is pretty. Can you try that? Next one we have is markets. Can you say that? And the next is chocolates. Can I hear you? Okay. Next one we have is beauty. Can we try that? And the next is forum. And the last one we have is farmer. Can I hear you say that? Now let's go to words where the second syllable is stressed. The first word we have is success. Can I hear you say success? Now I know most of you will be surprised at this because you've always thought the stress is on the first syllable. So you go success, but that's totally wrong. The word is success with the stress syllable on the second syllable. Next one we have is demand. Can I hear you? Next one we have is enough. And after that we have command. And the next one is machine. And after that we have canoe. Can you try to say that? 
And the last word we have is please. Can we try that? Now I know most of you would be so, most of you would find this funny when I said canoe. Well, actually, the word is pronounced as canoe, not kano. Okay, so take note of this. Now I've pronounced the word. I want you to try to pronounce these words on your own. I'll be waiting for you. That was super. I hope you were able to get the right pronunciation of these words. No doubt some of them sounded funny. All you have to do is stick to the right pronunciation and you get better as a result of it. Here are sentences I'd like you to read and we'll see how you're able to pronounce words with two syllables. Number one we have John has a challenge to be in command during lesson. John has a challenge to be in command during lessons. Number two, the pretty girl had success in her exams. The pretty girl had success in her exams. The police came to the place with chocolates for the victims. The police came to the place with chocolates for the victims. Machines are in demand at the market. Machines are in demand at the market. Now what I want you to do is I want you to practice with these words with two syllables. You've learned them today. I want you to keep using them until you get the best out of them. Okay? See you all in the next lesson. Have a wonderful time learning. Hello dear learners. It is time to learn again. I believe you are ready to learn. Today, we are going to take common wrong expressions. Expressions are what we say daily to our friends, parents, siblings, and everyone around us. They can expose us to commendation or rebuke. So my dear friend, you want to be careful when using expressions all the time. Some expressions are commonly used by everyone around us and they are wrong and most people don't know about it, so they keep using it wrongly. These are expressions which are used by most people with the thought that they are right. I'll be taking the wrong and right expressions and I would want you to use the right expressions when communicating. We're going to start with this expression. You hear um, a child saying, I will tell teacher for you, or I will tell my mommy for you. That expression is very wrong. You didn't have to say, I will tell teacher for you, rather. You should say, I will report you to teacher. If you want to report to your mommy, I will report you to my mommy. Okay? What about the saying whereby someone, you say, it took me with a pen. That is also very wrong. He don't say, it took me with a pen. Rather, you say, he poked me with a pen. You are an older brother to someone. It is wrong to say, is my junior brother. Rather, you should say, he's my young brother. What about the statement saying, he's lying on me? That is also very wrong. Rather, you should say, He's telling a lie on me. When you have a sweet, what do you do to the sweet? Do you say, I want to lick sweet? No. You should say, I want to suck sweets. What about you want to sit and there is no room for you to sit? Do you say, please shift for me to sit? That expression is wrong. Rather, you should say, Please move up for me to sit. What about this expression? He is looking for my trouble. That is wrong. You should rather say, he is getting on my nerves. I hope you've learned something from the wrong and right expression. If you've done that, bravo to you and I want you to use the right expressions when you're speaking. Now we're going to listen to a dialogue between Stephen and Mary. 
I want you to see if you can pick out the wrong expressions used and the right expressions to be used. Hello, Steven. It's been a while. How are you doing? I'm fine. Just a little bit under the weather, that's all. Under the weather? How possible? Really don't know. Been having difficulty doing things on my own. Please tell me you're joking. How could I? I'm telling you exactly what I'm going through. How could you be under the weather? Yet, I can touch you. <laughs> Please stop the jokes. Oh, now you see that you have been sounding funny all along. How could the weather that comes in season have humans under it? You've been getting me wrong all along. <laughs> when I say I've been under the weather, I meant I've been feeling sick. Oh, that was what you meant. Exactly. Oh, sorry. Didn't understand what you meant by that expression. It's okay. At least you've learned something new today. I sure have. Would we'll go home and teach everyone how to use this expression. Thanks, Steven. You're welcome. Hope you enjoy that. Now you see why you have to use these right expressions all the time, isn't it? Keep practicing and I'll see you in the next lesson. Hi friends, how are you doing today? It's another time to learn a new lesson. I'm your teacher, Gospel by name, and I'm so excited to be with you today. I believe you've been learning a lot from the lessons we've been having so far. Now, can you remember the last lesson we had? Yes, I'm sure you can because we had a very interesting topic on common wrong expressions. I want to believe you can remember those common wrong expressions and you can actually say them correctly, isn't it? So if I should say, he choked me, is that correct? What's the right thing to say? He poked me, isn't it? Yes, that's wonderful. Give yourselves a speak right clap. Speak right. That is amazing. Now, it's another time to learn a new lesson today. And we're going to be learning about our vowel sounds. Remember the last time we learned about our vowels 1 and 2? Can you remember? Can you pronounce vowel number 1 for me? If you said E, then I'm proud of you. You're truly a great learner. And I'm happy to see that you can still remember what we've learned so far. Can you remember the vowel number two? It's actually pronounced as E. Let's see if we can remember words with vowel number one. We have words like steel, words like beef, words like meat, words like cheap and so on while words with the a sound we have words like big words like chicken words like system words like build we have for the e sounds we have words like steel words like beef words like meat words like cheap and so on while words with the a sound we learned about words like big words like chicken words like system words like build today we're going to be considering vowel number three and vowel number four Vowel number three is a short sound and is pronounced as 
Eh, can you try to say that? Good, say eh. One more time. Eh, let me hear you. Say eh. Good. Now let's move on to vowel number four and it's pronounced as ah. Can I hear you try? You have to open your mouth wider than when you're saying eh. Can I hear you say ah? One more time. Very good. Can I hear you say ah? Okay, you're getting it. Great job. Now let us consider some words that could give us these sounds. But before we do, let us look at the letters that could give us these sounds in words. The S sound is given by letter E and EA. 